All right, what's going on guys? We're here in Connecticut today. I don't know why I'm out of breath. We're waiting for the train. We're heading into the city. It's Tuesday. Tonight we're doing a meetup in the city. Hopefully somebody shows up. People said they're gonna show up. I just got the new DJI pocket or tiny camera thing. It's not even released to the public yet. I just got it. I gotta figure that thing out. I'm gonna use it, try to film a little video for drone nerds. And we're on a little adventure into the city, baby. It's cold, I'm freezing. here into New York City. I gotta get an actual suit for tomorrow. Tomorrow morning we're going down to the New York Stock Exchange, going down to the floor, so I gotta get a suit for tomorrow. I wasn't ready for that opportunity to go down there, check it out, go down on the floor. We're gonna go uh, check in the hotel. Okay, so we're definitely not in Miami anymore because a $400 room in New York City is about the size of my bedroom at home compared you know to Miami you pay for an RG a big massive room so it's kind of funny but this is a pretty nice little spot it's a little boutique type of hotel it's called the William the bed some cool painting on the wall just for reference so now you know if you ever travel to New York City maybe you might want to stay at the William it's off of 39th Street and 5th in Midtown cool little place I gotta go get my suit now so we're gonna go back outside and hopefully get a suit so I'm looking good for tomorrow when I go to the New York Stock Exchange. Let's go. I, don't know, I think we're gonna go for the uh, blue suit, you know? Black is sometimes is too much. Black is too much. And then the gray is like, oh, he's not really serious. But if you have a blue suit, it's like, hey, I'm here for business. I'm also here to party. So we just got to this spot a little early now. I got my first man-sized beer, a beer the size of my head. And we all know my head is really, really big. So I don't know how many of these I can afford to drink tonight. I got a long day tomorrow. So I got worried for a minute. I thought no one might show up, but we actually had some people show up. We have a pullback, and then we have a straight shoot to the moon. Mm. Ow! <laughs> Enjoy those trends. That's a nice one minute pullback. Check it out, the Kano patterns here. Where's the best pullback here? I can't tell. What did it say? I can't read it right now. It's hit the fucking fit, man. What are you talking about? We're talking about P&Ls. P&Ls and equity, man. Equity. Of course, man. What about Patrick fucking Wheeling? Oh, yeah, baby. What you got doing? Winning, winning. That's it. Winning. There you go. All right, so we just got done with the meetup. Everybody came out. We had a nice little group. We just talked about stocks. People ask me questions. It's funny because one of the guys asked me a question about, hey, you know, he said, I make money green, but my green winners aren't as big as my red losers. And I said, hey, you know, he asked me, what's my issue? What do I need to change? I said, you already answered it. You already know the problem. Your losing trades run longer than your winning trade. They already know the answers. They know the issues. You just gotta be able to reflect on those and talk about that. So really cool YouTube subscribers. One of the guys said he was been following me for a couple years. He said he has been following me since the beginning. Big shout out to all of those guys, everybody who showed up to hang out. And we had a good time, drank some beers, hit the bid shirts out, some Bitcoin shirts. Always really fun just to meet up with people in real life. And who is actually watching my videos? Who are? Really cool, big thanks to everybody who showed up, everyone who came out. And I'm gonna get ready for tomorrow, big day tomorrow. All right, all right, so it's Wednesday morning. Nice little sleep last night, nice little meet up last night. And now we're heading around town, getting some stuff done. Today we're going down to the New York Stock Exchange. So I got a couple things I wanna try to get done this morning. I got the new, I don't know if I can't show it out in public yet cause it's not really live to the world, but I got something new, something really, really cool. DJI Osmo Pocket. Now it looks really small, it looks really awesome, it fits in your pocket and it shoots 4K video, super stabilized. The official release is today. They're actually releasing it here in New York City. I'm one of the first people in the world with it. All right, boys, we're looking good. We're feeling good. Look at this ensemble right now. I mean, 
Come on. I mean, I'm looking good. Honestly, I think I might just start wearing a suit everywhere I go every single day, no matter what I'm doing. I don't know, I could get used to living like this. I could get used to living just like this, my friends. I gotta head down to the financial district, about a 30 minute drive, maybe taxi. All right, so we just got down here to the financial district. I'm gonna do a little walking around, a little early. Then after we have lunch, we're gonna go to the exchange. Probably walk down to the bull. It's cold down here. It's pretty funny to see everybody. Everybody always wants to put their hands on the bull's balls. It's a thing, I guess, you know? People wanna touch some bull balls. We're here in New York. My boy Steven, big time, trader, living in New York, living the dream. Give us one little bit of advice out there for people who might be starting out day trading. Something that you've learned over the years, like you were talking about earlier about blowing up your account one time. What's the one piece of advice? One piece of advice, the trend is your friend and discipline. Have the discipline that if something is going against you, cut it out, you know, just cut it out. Small losses are gonna happen and they're inevitable. Um, but as long as those losses, small losses, don't take up all of your gains, um, just having that discipline, I would say, is the most important thing um, for beginner traders and just traders in general. That's awesome. Steven, pleasure to meet you. Steven like came out last man. night. We drank some beers together. We had some fun. It's been a great trip so far in New York. I'm going to go have a steak. I'll talk Ooh, to you later. Enjoy. I might have to get a small one. <laughs> My pants are pretty tight right now. <laughs> at the old Delmonico. It's been in business since 1879. They know how to cook a steak. Had a nice filet mignon for lunch. That might have been a bad idea because I'm ready for a nap now. I told Donnie that these pants are too tight to be able to eat a big lunch, but he took me to Delmonico's anyway. <laughs> He's always a man of the people trying to keep me fed. It's like my grandma. Like, are you hungry? Are you hungry? You want something? You want to eat? You want a steak for lunch? So we're gonna go to the exchange now, see if we can't get in some trouble. Donnie told me I'm allowed to break every rule. Get every fine possible. We went online, they said everything that I'm not supposed to do, I'm trying to do today. We're here. New York Stock Exchange, they let me in. I don't know why, but uh, we got in. Right there, it's happening. CNBC over there. Maybe I can jump on the, the panel real quick. A special guest on the CNBC. I, they want me to take a seat over there. <laughs> yeah. Checking out Katoni Company's operations. These guys are down here making the market, seeing how these orders are coming through. I'm talking to a guy this morning who put 300,000 shares through. So really cool to see what's going on out here. The way it works when you're trading electronically, most people are coming through one, one pipe and one lane of traffic, if you want to think of it like that. When you come to a broker, uh, you avoid that. We have our own, if you want to call it an HOV lane for orders. So the first guy in line on the dot pipe and the electronic pipe might be, they might get 100 shares, then we'll get the next 100 shares. The second guy in the dot pipe won't get anything until the first guy is totally done. So each broker has their own lane of traffic. It gives us not only a higher fill rate, uh, but we also have lower take fees and a higher rebate. Plus, for the close, which is even better, the cutoff time for mock lock is 15 minutes before the close. For a broker, it's electronically, it's 10 seconds before the close. And if you want, you can be right at the point of sale and hold a stock open until 10 after four if you want to, to get, get your print on the tape. All right, so market's about to close. I think we're about 500, 600 points up on the day right now. Market's about to close, we got about five minutes till the market closed. Everybody's getting all excited for the bell. Big green day in the market after a couple days of red. Definitely like to see some green. So everyone's excited and uh, we're closing out here. All the traders are basically trying to get their positions flat for the day. All the orders coming through. Everybody's sending their orders. They want to get flat by the end of the day. They want to get out of their positions, whatever they got coming. And everybody's basically, you know, in that last five minutes is putting the orders through. So they might be getting some big orders coming through and talking to some of the market makers about what's going on. Some of the guys, they're like, hey, you know, I got that last five seconds, the last 15 seconds, once the market closes to basically close out all my positions and hopefully get filled. So pretty cool to see kind of how these guys are really making the market. I talked to a guy earlier talking about how he would basically had to buy 80,000 shares of CVS and it had the algorithm basically running. Really cool to see, interesting. Always interesting to learn. You wanna be learning everything about the market, honestly. And the more you can, the better, you know?
go ahead and say it that today was a day that I will always remember. The experience, the knowledge, getting to really see what goes down behind the scenes at the New York Stock Exchange, seeing a real deal floor broker put in orders, take orders, sell orders. It was awesome. It was a really cool experience meeting all the guys down there. Big thank you to Speed Trader for making it all happen. Donnie at Speed Trader. If you guys haven't already, make sure you check out Speed Trader. And every time I come to New York City, I just feel really motivated, really inspired, and really just ready to take on the world. I got a 6 a.m. flight tomorrow morning back to Miami, so I got a lot of work to do. I gotta start putting some ideas together in terms of things I wanna talk about, things that I learned on this trip, just the overall idea of what I thought I knew was totally wrong. I think a lot of the people out there who are teaching people about day trading, you know, these day trading courses, stock market gurus on YouTube, they really have no idea. And I'm really interested in learning more, just more about the market, how everything works. I wanna know A to Z, the truth. I think there's a lot of people out there that are misinformed and I'm looking forward to just always gaining more knowledge, more experience. You know, knowledge is power, power is money. Big thank you to everybody in New York City that came out the other night. Big thank you to Speed Trader, to Donnie, to everybody that I've met while I'm out here. Big thank you to everybody out there. This is a trip that I will always remember. I'm just out here trying to become a better day trader, trying to become just a better version of myself. So if I can learn something new every single day, hey, it's not a bad way to live. There it is, I'm, I gotta go, I gotta go to bed. I really had no idea I would be where I am today. When I first started this YouTube channel, if you would have told me you know, a year ago that I would one day be walking the floor at the New York Stock Exchange, that I would actually be talking to people at the New York Stock Exchange and then getting experience from real floor traders, the guys who are really moving the market, that's something that I would never really believe. So it's been an amazing, amazing trip and I'm excited to get back home. I'm excited to get back to work and back to uh, you know what I love doing, what I love doing every day. So there it is, I gotta go. 6 a.m. flight back to Fort Lauderdale. It's gonna be an adventure. I'll talk to you guys later on if you haven't already. Well, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, let's go.